Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Cassandra and today I'm going to be giving you a little pregnancy update and basically a nesting update of what I've been up to. I'm sorry I haven't been able to get a video out these last couple weeks, but I have been really, um, this is probably the most difficult pregnancy I've ever had actually. This is my third in case you're new. I have an eight-year-old and a six-year-old and I'm 37 weeks currently. And so for the past few weeks, I've been in a lot of pain. Um, I ha always have that pelvic dysfunction. So that's like where your pelvis feels unstable and sore, lots of sciatic pain. Um, just like I almost have to stay in bed and try to heat my <laughs> back or um, yeah, just be in like a certain position. So that's been really tricky and I haven't been getting a lot done until the last couple of days. I feel like I finally got some energy and I think I've begun nesting, which is great. I've been looking forward to nesting <laughs> for a while. So I'm getting some projects done. My husband is so, so wonderful. He's right on board with me helping me out and um, I basically just write him a list of things to do and he just goes through and, and does them. Um, today we're actually celebrating Father's Day. We like to do it on a different day than Sunday because Sunday we have a lot of obligations like church and we just like to give him a full day of choosing activities and he is hiking with the kids right now. Normally I would go hiking, however I really can't. <laughs> very well right now I would just be slowing everybody down so he um he took the kids which is lovely and he stayed in town in case anything happened to me because he's really worried about that I'm like I'm two seconds from the hospital like I'll be okay but um I just think he's very sweet so anyways I'm getting off track so my pregnancy um this is my first pregnancy with doctors and OBs and hospitals my first two I had home births with midwives and I have got to tell you straight away if you have an opportunity to have a midwife or have a home birth um, I highly highly recommend it in compared to going the traditional route there is so much less hysteria and nonsense with midwives they know what they're doing you feel like they know what they're doing it, I mean it's it's what they do right Whereas doctors, especially I'm seeing a lot of family doctors, just don't specialize in it. So it's a totally different experience. Now I will say I am a little bit more overweight with this child than I was for my other two. A little bit older, um, I'm 33. And um, so I think that has caused a lot of hysteria. However, I'm so grateful that I've had to before this with midwives and I'm able to really just stand up for what I know and believe in because I feel terrible for all the moms here that um, only get to, like if they're on their first child and this is what they're going through, it's pretty terrible. So I'll just tell you a few things that have happened. So early on in my pregnancy, they decided to test me for gestational diabetes. I mean, at like very early, like 12 weeks maybe. And I've talked about this in a previous pregnancy update, so I'll just skim over it. Um, and that test obviously came back fine. Uh, and then they tested me again, which I don't like the test to begin with because you drink a whole giant thing of like sugar water and it takes me out like for the day. Like I cannot function um, because you often have to fast beforehand. And so, um, yeah, so I did it again, but I didn't do, they gave me this mega one the first time. Like it was a ridiculous test. I would have never agreed to it looking back, but I was just kind of trusting the, the process in the beginning. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll just, you know, do what they're telling me in the beginning. Um, so anyway, get the next one back. It's like borderline. Um, because I didn't do the one she wanted me to do, which was the big mega one again. I mean, I'm not doing a good job explaining exactly what this is, but you know, when you drink the huge drink and you fast for longer or stuff like that. It's like, I'm not doing that again, but I'll do like the regular one. I know, like, I feel like my, I really rely on my instincts a lot with this stuff. And I just, I don't know. I was just like, I know there's nothing wrong. It's fine, you know, but whatever, you know, sometimes you can't tell these symptoms of diabetes are really similar to pregnancy symptoms. So, you know, it's important to, to see right and if we do this uh, again here which i'm sure we will i'll just get a glucose monitoring system i can do at home we already have like a blood pressure cuff and things like that that i can monitor at home but um yeah i won't do the the sugar test again at all 
I just don't think it's very good for you to pump yourself full of all that sugar while you're fasting. And obviously my body doesn't react well to it. So anyway, I chose not to do that again. I was still under, like I still wasn't classified as having diabetes, but my doctor ever since has treated me like I have diabetes. So for example, every week I go in, she measures me. She's like, oh, you're measuring too big which I did with my other two kids as well, always like a couple weeks ahead, I've had big babies. And so she's been flipping out about that and being like, oh, like, you know, you're gonna have to be induced and all this stuff. And I was like, I'm not being induced. Like, and they do this with so many women, I feel like, and, and so often it leads to C-section. And I do not want a C-section. Again, this is my own experience. Obviously, if there's a medical reason you actually need a C-section, of course, you know, that's good. But I think it's so, so rare and we do it way too much. Uh, because of this kind of thing where they're like, oh, I'm scared. You're measuring a week ahead. You need to be induced. You don't, right? Like my body has gone 41 and five, 41 and two with my son. And my daughter was 41 weeks and five days. Um, and everything was just fine. <laughs> so anyway, so then that was going on. And so she's like, oh, you're measuring too big, whatever. So then like la the last time I went, she was like, oh, you're measuring two weeks smaller than last time. Like this is not an accurate thing. It's just like an estimated thing, depending on who's measuring you. Like it has, it's not a valid reason to be induced in my opinion. So there was that. And then she's like, oh, I need to send you for an ultrasound to make sure there's not too much fluid around the baby because that could be the problem. And then we would need to, you know, induce you, same thing. So I was like, okay, I'll go for an ultrasound because I've only had one ultrasound this pregnancy. I didn't have a dating one, which um, is a little bit frustrating because they've changed my due date three times now. So uh, anyway, so I went for the ultrasound. I mean, the chances of this water thing, I'm pretty sure like less than 2%. So I'm like, whatever, I'll still go because I just want to see the baby on the ultrasound anyway. Um, so I went, of course, that was fine. Then every week I've gone in for the last couple weeks, she sent me directly to the hospital after to get a continuous fetal heart rate for the baby because the baby is literally moving around and it has a high heart rate. Like, of course it has a high heart rate. It's literally moving around when you're trying to feel its heart rate. Like uh, this, and again, I know this stuff happened with the midwives. They of course didn't panic and send me to the hospital. They're just like, oh, the baby's moving. Awesome. Like <laughs> um, the heart rate, is supposed to be between 110 and 160 and it was 170 and then 180 the week after um and of course when i got to the hospital everything was just fine it's like 130 140 the whole time and then even the last time i went like i'm i was so frustrated because i didn't want to go i just said i'm not doing it anymore they're just being crazy but my husband was really worried he's like oh can you please go and i was like okay no problem fine but i was really upset um and so i went in and i was like i'm really upset to be here it's a waste of my time and i had to bring my kids every time because he happened to be at work or whatever so i went and i was like this is a complete waste of my time can we just put it on for a second if it's fine i'll go and she's like no you should really do it the whole time and she was so sweet so i was like okay fine I, you know i don't want you to get in trouble whatever do it for i think it's 20 or 30 minutes then she says to me, I know this is ironic, but I actually have to wait for the baby to move more. It's not moving enough now. The heart rate isn't high enough. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. You're sent for it moving too much. Then it's not moving enough. They're just hysterical. It's like, I can feel it moving. It's fine. It's moving regularly. It's fine. You know, it's just insane how, yeah, it's just hysteria. So of course I don't want her to get in trouble. So don't they, they're, the whole point in why I'm doing this by the way is because she's so scared to have diabetes. Don't they have to give me some juice to be able to get the baby moving? Like, it's just like, really? Like these things just do not make any sense, right? So finally the baby starts moving and I can leave. But it's gotten to the point where like, they're doing literally nothing for me at these prenatal appointments. Like I just want to cancel them all. I'm so frustrated, but it's fine. I'll just go and um, yeah, just not do any of the dumb nonsense i mean if the baby's heart rate's like 300 yeah like i'm gonna go to the hospital <laughs> but like if it's like 10 over like everybody needs to calm down um anyways so i've been really really frustrated with the care here and i know i'm pretty darn sure i'm gonna have to fight when i go in there to get what i want i'm not being hooked up to a fetal heart rate monitor or getting an iv or any of that crap i just want to have the baby the way i've always had the baby and just get out of there as soon as possible. They like to keep you for like a day or two. I don't want to be there for a day or two. Oh my gosh. Um, so of course, if like something happens and I need to be there, then obviously I'll be there. But um, they're just looking for problems at that point when they're hooking you up to a fetal monitor. Like you're gonna find a problem, right? Like 
again, leading to C-sections, so many C-sections. They're actually having a problem right now with our hospital on the OB floor. They're considering shutting it down, but I don't think that would happen until like August or something like past when I'm due, but this has happened before in case you guys don't know because of like a staffing issue. I'm not exactly sure, but the OB ward was shut down and all the women had to go to Edmonton to deliver. And so I think maybe try to do that to me, but I probably won't go to be honest. I'll just go to a March when I'm having the baby. I really just want to go in the forest at this point, to be honest, but you know, my husband won't let me. Uh, that's a joke. I don't really want to go to the forest, <laughs> but, but uh, just to clarify before I get attacked, I've had a lot of like weird <clears throat> preeclampsia symptoms. Like every time I look up a symptom I'm having, it's like, oh, preeclampsia. I have like really, really low, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, blood pressure. So there's like no chance of me having preeclampsia, but it's just funny because I'm like, oh, there's another preeclampsia symptom that I, for some reason, have. Uh, again, the doctor's like, well, it's almost too low, the, your blood pressure. I'm like, it's, it's too high, it's too low, like you just can't win. Because I had to stay one time because it was too high. Because I, I always get so stressed when I go in now that I feel like it's like spiking my blood pressure up. And, and other things, like if I'm stressed being in there, pretty sure the baby is going to be stressed, right? Like, so it's heart rate is probably a little higher because of that as well. I am just so stressed to go to these appointments to see what they're going to do next, where they're going to send me, what they're going to say, you know? And even though I know these things and I feel like I'm really in touch with my body and whatever, it still freaks you out, right? To hear like, oh no, there might be some kind of problem or whatever. It's just not, not good for the mental, mental health. Now, as far as the mental health, <laughs> other than that, I'm doing super well. I'm like super happy. Um, you know, people always talk about at this stage wanting the baby out and well, oh, you probably want it out and whatever. And I've never felt that way. I'm really happy for it to stay in as long as it needs to stay in. Um, there's like maybe a day or two in my whole pregnancy that I'll be like, okay, if it comes out today, I'll be happy, you know? But like, other than that, I, I never really feel that way. I'm happy to, uh, yeah have it inside for as long as it needs to be. And I also have a really wonderful husband who's super supportive and kind and yeah, just helps me. So that's the pregnancy update. So a few of the things I'm doing, again, it's only been a few days that I feel like I've been truly nesting. I've been literally waiting for it. And I'm like, what am I gonna nest? Uh, is we've done the bathroom, which I'm so happy about. Like I told him, I'm like, okay, I want a shelf here and I want this and I want you to fix this. And he's, he just did it all like, it was amazing. And then I'm really like crazy about food. I've got all the food done now, all the freezer meals and more. Um, and I've like, basically that's what our entire freezers are full of is just freezer meals. I did a video on that a little while ago about how I was getting organized with freezer meals to help my husband out while he has to help me out <laughs> when I have the baby uh, for like a month or so. I have a month meal plan and freezer meals done. So if you're interested in that, I'll link that down below. It's just a few videos ago too, so you can easily go back. But um, so that, and then also this garden, like I've been obsessed with learning different things to do with it. And I just have a few little um, planter bags. I don't even know what they are out there. And we're growing peas tomatoes, like cherry tomatoes and beefsteak tomatoes, cauliflower, um, parsley, cilantro, basil, and lettuce. And a thing called auric, I think it's called. I got the seeds for free, but they were like, it's like a cross between spinach and lettuce, I think. And so a lot of it's doing well, um, except for the beans. They're the beans or peas. I think they're beans. Yeah, they're green beans. They're so good though. I have to replant two of those plants. Only one is really going very well. And this is an experimental year. I know nothing about growing things here. Back in Ontario, we only grew tomatoes um, and we could only really grow cherry tomatoes well. I think we might've tried peppers one year actually. We might've got a few peppers, but I looked up what to grow here before I chose seeds. Uh, and now I've talked to some of the neighbors, some of our neighbors, like our neighbor way down here has this most incredible garden of vegetables. And I went down and talked to her for a while and she gave me a lot of really good tips. So super thankful. And even the neighbor beside us right here has things growing and is really good at it. Um, so yeah, I'm really thankful to have some neighbors that are really good at this stuff. 
So we're just doing an experimental year, see what grows. Obviously I'm gonna have the baby soon, so I'm gonna have to rely on my husband and kids to maintain it. They're not so into it, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, you know, even if we get a bit, I'll do a, an update and let you know cost-wise, like how much money we, well, we're gonna lose money this year because we had to buy all the supplies. But as the years go on, hopefully we will be able to even make a bit of money because as you guys know, grocery prices are going crazy. That's why I've been making so many um, grocery videos and meal plan videos and because I'm obsessed with food right now, like getting food ready. I'm just I'm doing what I'm, what I'm focused on basically, right? This channel was always supposed to be about like progression and what my focuses were and just hoping to help people as they go through motherhood and homeschooling and whatever to be able to hopefully have them be able to gain something useful for their experience from my experience. So um, I know a lot of people are always like, oh, when are you gonna do whatever, yell knife videos or homeschooling videos or whatever. And like, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of do what I'm focused on at the moment. I think as I have the baby, I'll probably do a lot more homeschool videos, but I understand if this channel is not for you and you need to unsubscribe, I totally get it. Uh, especially if you're used to the yellow knife content, won't be making yellow knife content as much anymore. I feel like I've kind of covered everything. I need to cover. I'll do some random updates. Hope to do some lives still in the future where you can ask me questions about, you know, current things in Yellowknife or I can direct you to previous videos or whatever. But um, yeah, I'm kind of moved on now to just motherhood and, you know, just being a stay-at-home mom and some things I've learned as I've had more kids to my family and as I get older and um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it. So um yeah, thank you so much for watching today, guys. Really appreciate you. And uh, if you haven't subscribed and you're interested in videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.